I'm Sarah Carlson. I'm with Practical Farmers of Iowa. We work a bunch on cover crops and we've been helping farmers make decisions right now on what to do with this fall's cover crop season and also work with cover crop businesses who are getting ready to, you know, have aerial seeding occur across a lot of the state. And we've just had this large storm, the derecho, um, you know, impact several million acres of corn and soybeans across the state of Iowa. So today we wanted to fly a drone on some downed corn uh, here north of Nevada, Iowa with a cover crop seeder attached to it so that we could see how much seed can get through that canopy that's either slanted at a 45 degree angle, maybe upright or maybe down on the ground and see what seeds got down onto the ground um, below that downed corn to decide whether we should fly on cover crops or not here in the next week or so around Labor Day. So it seems like there's a couple scenarios that we should look at. One, if we plan to harvest our corn and we're going to try to put corn that's either standing but it's damaged or it's at a 45 degree angle or even corn that's on the ground, if we're going to put that through the combine and we're still going to want a cover crop on it, we can probably still go ahead and seed the cover crops with a plane if that was our, our initial scenario, scenario or we could do it still post harvest. If there's large percentages of our field with the leaf on the ground, like this here where the leaf is on the ground, the seeds were sitting on top of the leaves in that scenario. But when corn was a foot off the ground but laying over, the seeds had gotten through the canopy into the ground, overwhelmingly, much to my surprise. So we have to evaluate our field. Is it all snapped and laying on the ground and we're going to have seeds on top of the, on top of the leaf? We may not want to uh, put a cover crop on that by aerial application because we may not even be going to try to harvest that crop. So another scenario would be where the corn is completely snapped off and all the leaf material is flat on the ground. It is not advised to aerial seed that. One, because we're probably not sure what we're going to do about that field with harvest. So let's say we're going to give up on that field. The adjuster's going to come out. They're going to zero it out or give us 20 bushels. It's going to be a very low yield. And then they're going to release it. If we have cattle, we could bail that off and feed that. If we don't have cows and we're not sure what we're going to do with it, we've got to deal with all that corn going to soybeans next year or even corn next year. So we could hit it with a stock chopper and then vertical till it in. And when we do that vertical tillage pass with or without fertilizer, we may want to put a spinner spreader on it and put down a bushel of cereal rye. That would be the best opportunity to get a cover crop on that corn that is flat on the ground and totally snapped off after we've worked it or taken off the cows. It is not advised though to aerial seed where the seeds are going to be on top of the leaves if that's the majority of the field's scenario. Now, if the majority of the field is at a 45 degree angle or is snapped off like this or is standing like this or maybe is a foot off the ground similar to this, we saw seeds get to the ground. Actually, very surprisingly, we saw seeds at a normal cereal rye seeding rate of a bushel to the acre. 80% of the seeds were getting to the ground. Even where we had lots of dense coverage like this, we still had seeds getting to the ground. Where corn was standing like this, it was a normal aerial seeding application with seeds to the ground as well. So then a farmer needs to decide if they're going to go ahead and harvest um, and try to pick up this corn with a normal combine pass um, and slug through it this fall. Maybe choose cereal rye and don't choose oats that potentially could stand up in the fall because oats are aggressive in the fall and impede harvest of that corn that's on the ground. Rye will lay flat, oats will stand up. So we need to be careful on what our goals are. And if we are mixing oats in, and we're not gonna take this off with cows, we're gonna combine this, we may wanna take oats out of that mix. Flying on cereal rye though into this scenario right now um, with corn standing normal, or even oats with corn standing normal, looks to be okay. The seed got to the ground, uh, it looks very like a potentially very successful scenario. There actually is much more sunlight underneath this down dense canopy than um, I had expected. Um, and so I think we can proceed with a majority of our aerial seeding application as normal business. We just have to decide what we're going to do with that corn to get it off the field. 
Okay, so now let's say we're in a hail damaged corn or soybean field. Let's talk about hail damaged soybeans first. When we don't have a lot of, uh, when we have a lot of sunlight into that soybean canopy, we need to be careful if we put an oat cover crop into that soybean aerial seeded because the oats can really aggressively grow and we could have issues with fall harvest of soybeans that have had denuded plants from hail damage. So we want to be cautious using oats in that mix. Maybe we just want to do cereal rye or wheat or we want to go to triticale or we want to do maybe just turnips or radishes, just use brassicas with like winter wheat. But we need to be cautious with oats because when we run that bean head on the ground and there's a lot of sunlight from now until harvest into that canopy and if there's rainfall those oats are really going to take off. So we got to be careful that could really impede fall harvest. So for hail damaged corn, we've got to go out and evaluate how much leaf, how much leaf is on the ground. If we have more than 70% of the ground covered in corn leaves, we're not going to have as much seed onto the soil and have good soil to seed contact. So we need to be careful and maybe wait till post harvest on hail damaged corn for cover crop seeding. If we have like at least 50% of the soil exposed with hail damaged corn, go for it the seed will get to the ground and we will have good uh, cover crop stands, actually really good because we'll have so much sunlight into that hail damaged corn. 